that's associated with shame. Like why, why when, when a person is, you know, when they want to shame somebody, they strip them of their clothes, right? Or, you know, you, you don't want to, to normally and naturally be seen naked. It's a shameful thing. It's something that, you know, makes you less. That's why when they torture people, right, they torture them naked because they're trying to humble them and, and bring them down um, and humiliate them. Why is that? Well, let's go to Genesis 2. We'll see in the beginning. I believe we're actually uh, given a hint of why it's shameful to actually appear naked to people. <clears throat> now, if you didn't know, before the fall, it says here in Genesis 2.24, uh, 2.25, it says here, and they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. So the Bible actually makes it a point that when God made Adam and Eve and put them in the garden, they were both naked, they were both there, and they were not ashamed of being naked before the fall. So there was no shame associated with nakedness. But then we get into the fall. We see Genesis 3, there was the temptation of Satan with Eve. Eve ate of the tree, gave to her husband to eat. We pick up at verse 7. And the eyes of them, were bo eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Now, this is an interesting uh, uh, reference, I believe, to the Lord Jesus Christ, that the voice of the Lord, the word of God, is walking in the garden. Uh, in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou wast naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? So it's interesting here that when they eat of the, of the fruit, their eyes open and then they now just have this inherent sense of shame with their nakedness. That's why God says, well, who told you you were naked? How did you know that you were naked? Whereas it's obviously, a, it's like a rhetorical, right? Like he's not asking him to, to say, oh, this is person who told me. It's saying that nobody had to tell him. So once they sinned, they, they then were given this inherent sense of shame. And that's why they naturally wanted to cover themselves. And that's what I believe, that's where we get this shamefulness with nakedness. It's because of the fall. And it's probably a spiritual picture of the fact that, that you know, our sin makes us naked and we need to be clothed by the Lord Jesus Christ. So we see here that it's an inherent sense of shame. It's not something that somebody has to tell you that you know that you're naked. It's something that you know inherently because of our sinful nature. And if you go down further here to verse 21, so you remember when, when they sinned, they sewed fig leaves themselves. They made, they made aprons out of, tree, out of the leaves to cover themselves. But we see here after God pronounces their curse and, and says what's going to be the effect of sinning against God, it says here in verse 21, Unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothed them. So before he sent them out of the garden, he actually clothed them with skins of animals. And what's interesting there is because he clothed them with skins, that means an animal had to die in order for Adam and Eve to be clothed. So it's interesting there that something had to die in order for Adam and Eve to be clothed. They tried to make their own clothing out of fig leaves, representing their works, trying to clothe themselves. But we need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Something has to die and then we are clothed by something that comes from God, by his grace. I want to just compare that to 2 Corinthians 5 here. And I believe this is why we have this inherent sense of shame. And this is why we have this inherent sense of wanting to clothe ourselves. Because it's a spiritual picture of being clothed in righteousness by our house that is going to be given by God. Kind of like how uh, you know, women give birth. You know, and before the fall, we believe they gave birth without pain. But then after the fall, now in sorrow and in pain, they give birth. And, and that's a picture of salvation, isn't it? Because you know, when, when somebody... In order to get saved, it required the suffering and the death and the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. It requires this, this suffering in order to bring forth new life. There's always these pictures, even in the things that God uh, judges the world and judges sin with. Look here in 2 Corinthians 5. It says here, For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God and house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. So you see here that we're going to get clothed by God. We often try to clothe ourselves with our own righteousness, but we, we desire this clothing that is going to come from God. 
If so be that being clothed, we, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon that mortality might be swallowed up of life. So that's why I believe we have that inheritance of shame. It's a picture of spiritually what's going to happen because one day we're going to shed this flesh, which is what, what is naked, it was sinful, and God is going to clothe us with a house from heaven. That is one of them. So a result of the fall was that man would have an inherent sense of shame that would be associated with being naked. This is a picture of the sin-tainted flesh and the need to be clothed by the Lord. This covering required the death of an animal. And you know, a lot of people believe that the animal that was killed in Genesis was possibly a lamb, you know, picturing the, the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. But we're not told what animal it is, it just says it's skins. Um, the purpose of clothing is therefore to cover your nakedness and your shame. That's why we wear clothing. So if you're wearing clothing and not covering your nakedness, then it's not fulfilling its purpose. I won't go to all the verses. There's many verses in the Bible that link nakedness with shame. You can look them up yourself. Um, but often they are, they are seen together in verses. Now what is shame? I just want to show a couple of verses here. Psalm 4 verse 2. Now what, what is shame? Look at these verses. O ye sons of men, how long will ye turn my glory into shame? How long will ye love vanity and seek after leasing? Salah. Uh, Proverbs 3, 35. The wise shall inherit glory, but shame shall be the promotion of fools. So you can see here what shame is being contrasted to. It's being contrasted to glory. Hosea 4, 7. As they were increased, so they sinned against me. Therefore, I will change their glory into shame. Philippians 3.19, another one. It says here, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. So just going from those four verses, we can see that shame is the opposite of glory. So what does glory mean? Glory means to lift something up, right? To glorify something, to worship it and lift it up above everything else. So what is shame? Shame is when you bring it down. It's the opposite of glory. It's the opposite of lifting something up. You bring it down. You humble it. You bring it low. And this is why it's used here in Philippians 3 because the ungodly, they take what should be shameful, what should be just reserved for the bedroom, which should be covered up, and then they go and march on the street and they glorify it. They put it on public display. Something that should be shameful and should be covered, their glory is in their shame. That's what this verse is saying. They glory in things that ought to shame them um, because their conscience is seared. So shame is to be brought low. It's the opposite of glory. Now shame can be a result of sin, right? Like if you do something wrong, you can be ashamed. But shame is not always sinful. And this is something... Um, I want to show you from the Bible, shame is not sin in and of itself, but sin can result in shame.